Hello, welcome back to the River Witham in Lincolnshire. This is part two of... You, you did watch the first part, didn't you? Oh, for goodness sake. All right, well, I'm not going to recap now. You can always watch the video later. But here we are in Lincolnshire. See that green dot? Well, that is where my narrowboat home is moored as we start the next leg of our journey. But before we do, I just want to say a quick thank you to Bruce Skelly who I am going to put in my vlog book here because he's pledged $5 through Patreon per video. So that's an, that's an amazing commitment and it means he goes into the Crank It crew. So Bruce, welcome to the Crank It crew. If you don't know what the Crank It crew is by now, you should know, but check out the link in the description if you want to see what you sort of get by pledging money, basically. People like Bruce who support me through Patreon actually ensure that I can work part-time and also make these videos for you. So if you think that's important, then please help me out. <laughs> anyway, so on with the video. Here we are in Lincolnshire. We're on the river with them and it is quite a fascinating area because if you look at a map, you've got all these channels that, well, they're basically called dikes. And I'm sorry if that offends you, but that's what they're called. Back in the 17, 1800s, Dutch civil engineers came over here, bloody foreigners coming over here and making our land usable. Uh, they came over here, requested by landowners to revive the land and make it farmable. And this is some of the best farming land, certainly for vegetables and things like that, in the whole of the UK. So they've done a good job. But it has been raining a hell of a lot recently. And all that means that there is quite a bit of flow on the river today, so... Yeah, it's a little bit slower going. Right, we're just coming up to the 22 kilometer marker, which means 22 kilometers from the end of the Witham, Lincoln. And, uh, but where we just, when I've just left at Woodall Spa, Kirkstead Bridge, I was 25. So we've only gotten three kilometers in 45 minutes, so that's kilometers an hour or miles an hour. Pretty slow, huh? Here we are at Southery, a little place that used to have a train station back in the olden times. But now it's just a lovely towpath, actually. It's really good for cycling. Uh, I've stop stopped here at the Visitor Moorings um, just for the day. So this is the morning. I've just stopped for the day, get some work done. All right, so I've just finished work in that on that mooring. And uh, it's, time to, it's time to crank it, guys. Could have done that a bit cooler.
Yep, we will not be mooring there. <laughs> floating pontoon. The floating pontoon is fine, but the the ladder is just submerged. So I'm gonna get your wellies out for that. Christ. It was at this moment that Robbie started to sh himself. She never been on a river in flood before, so I don't know what to expect. Hopefully, I'll be able to get up this next lock at Bardney. Otherwise, I don't really know what I'm going to do. I have to go back to that mooring where I, that I'm going to be marooned on. <laughs> oh my god! Last time I came down here, those mooring bollards were about two meters away from the water level. <laughs> Last time I was coming through this lock, I had help from my cousin Rob here. But this time I was on my own. I was a little bit confused at first whether I'd actually be able to actually go through the lock. But of course, physics mean that if the water was any higher, it would be fine. You know, you, you would just ta the, the lock would almost be meaningless because it would all be the same level. The water would all be the same level. Anyway, what a beautiful sight. Getting a bit too dark now to keep filming, so I'm just going to quickly get the boat through the lock, moor up, and then uh, see where we are from there. Whilst moored at Bardney, I checked out the local pub, Angel Inn, definitely pub of the week material. And also, I had a little switch around with my furniture, so basically, it's really uncomfortable, this bonquette thing due to the sloping walls <coughs> and the actual height of that bench. So what I did was I took it all apart, I sawed off the bottoms, so I brought it down a level, but also I switched it round to the other side of my boat. Now that is what I'm talking about. It's so much more comfortable. I've got loads more space somehow. And also I've got a nice little desk in the corner, which I've made from an offcut. Brilliant. So at this point in the journey, it's about two weeks after the last time we traveled and the water, we've had more rain. So the water is actually a little bit higher and I can now see over these banks, which is quite incredible, really. Uh, a rare opportunity to see the rest of the surrounding landscape. Right, we're coming up to Fiskerton Nature Reserve now. And this is a really nice stop. I mean, when I was here, both times going up and down the river, I was completely on my own. It was just so secluded and peaceful and uh, really interesting as well. So in this little nature reserve, we've got obviously got these um, nice little lakes here. But also there's a bird watching hut here, which is modelled on a Bronze Age homestead. So that's pretty interesting. Um, if you want to know more about the history of the area just just search on youtube there's loads of videos including malk of lincoln check him out if you're interested especially if you're interested in the river with them and other lincolnshire waterways i was just talking to my cousin's wife earlier on today and she said she's never seen the Witham this high it's absolutely ridiculous <laughs> more ridiculous than my hat
almost at Lincoln, almost there. We're just going to stop at Washingborough first. Now this is a delightful little village to explore. It's got a mini supermarket, got fish and chips, it's got takeaway, pizza. It's also got two pubs. But which one is going to be pub of the week? Well, whichever would serve me, I guess. I don't want to go in there anyway. God damn it. Oh, finally, we found a pub worth mentioning on the River Witham. This is a great place for meals and drinks, hanging out with your friends. And I felt cool because I got a pint bought for me by these guys. Right, now I'm just trying to crank it into Lincoln to finish off the River Witham journey and uh, to also check out a pie shop that I missed out when I was in Lincoln, which is called Browns. So let's see if we can make it. Let's crack it. Looking ahead of us, thankfully the light is green so we can get through the sluice here, get through the um, lock. But I was a little bit worried about that uh, with all the water levels but they've come down enough now and the green light's on so we can go through. Yeah. Right, so this is the operating panel for the lock. Uh, it's a guillotine lock, which is very rare. You never see these. There's, I think there's only a handful in the UK. And what I'll do here is I'll just, I'm just getting water into the lock now, so that, that it's raising the boat up to the right level. And then check this out. Yeah, pretty cool lock that one. Really like the um, the fact that it's well, it's just completely different to any other that I've tried before. And uh, yeah, once the gate comes down, then I can just get back on the boat and go find a mooring. Right, we're all moored up, so it's time to try and get a pie and a pint. Here we go. Now, according to my cousin Rob, who we'll see him and his family in a second, this is one of the oldest pie-eating establishment certainly in Lincoln. People have been eating here for about 200 years. So yeah, what a feast, absolutely delicious. And cheers. And as we leave the mooring here at Stamp End and get back in through Lincoln again and uh, head on to the next destination, which is at the moment a top secret. Lincoln, love you but I'm gonna have to leave you, and I'm gonna have to leave you with this wonderful sequence of images, these moving images taken from a narrowboat as we approach the whole of glory. I thank you. <laughs>